and I've said that people who have a, a predominantly reptilian soul find it very difficult to meditate. Mm. Uh, in fact, many of my clients um, who have reptilian souls are not capable of meditating in the accepted format. So I will give them uh, methodologies which allow them to meditate because it's important that that is done, mm. but maybe not in the accepted way. Uh, the reason that, that Mr. Trump is not compromised is because he's a billionaire and there was no way they could compromise him. What has he said? He said he's only going to take one dollar of the four hundred thousand dollar salary that the president has. He has to take the dollar because otherwise he's not the president. The reason for that was he was warning everyone else, uh, particularly he was warning elements of the CIA and some elements of the FBI that if you uh, attempt to remove me there will be civil war in this country. Really tried to take us off this timeline. It failed. But if you have the ability and you can model the future, you will see that humanity is going to evolve. So there's been a, a huge emphasis on the upper chakras in, yes. in the literature, in the so-called guru type people that want to mm. put themselves out to be leaders of the new age or whatever it is, always emphasizing, you know, the throat the uh, the third eye and, and even uh, going for the crown and above to people who have no balance whatsoever in the lower chakras. Hmm. And this is very dangerous, as you may know. So I just want to address that. And, and do you want to talk about anything you do to keep your own balance? Maybe some advice you can give people in this regard if you feel that there is something that you know about this or that you've been guided to be aware of. The important part, you're quite right, that the Far East has always looked at the spiritual development of man or woman uh, through connection to the cosmos mm -hmm. and the way it works. Um, but when you live on a three-dimensional planet, you are having to deal with the physical world. Now, everything I believe is a learning journey. So when a person is here, they are on their own individual learning journey to try to balance themselves. Um, and I've said that people who have a, a predominantly reptilian soul find it very difficult to meditate. Uh, in fact, many of my clients um, who have reptilian souls are not capable of meditating in the accepted format. So I will give them uh, methodologies which allow them to meditate because it's important that that is done, mm. but maybe not in the accepted way. But every person needs to connect with the planet, with the consciousness of the planet, with what we call our higher self, actually mm. what I call source, mm. the true creational force, mm. to create and connect there because that is the only way to get that reboot, if you like, to get that connection through to truth. Mm. Um, otherwise what will happen is you are attempting to understand your way on life with the tools that society has given you. And those tools are corrupted. So what you have to do is to actually connect with your true self, your higher self and to source so that you can balance the information that you're getting uh, against an independent, loving um, energy, a, a creational force. So everyone is different. Everyone is there for their own journey, whatever that might be. Mm -hmm. um, and my belief is that if you make mistakes, then the key is whether you are going to face them or run away from them. Mm -hmm. If you are going to, um, you know, when it became obvious to me that I was being manipulated by a reptilian lord, uh, I could have denied it and said, that's not the case. Um, uh, it never happened. Or I could have run away and hidden, but I didn't. What I did is exactly what I've just suggested that you look to your higher self, you look to source, mm. and if you discover that's the case, then you learn from it, you deal with it, and you move on. Mm -hmm. And mm. that's what you do, but you've learned from that. So yeah. there are plenty of people who are on a learning journey and keep on falling. In other words, they don't face up to what's put in front of them. And uh, I'm now in a much clearer position as to the, the way that, that people are manipulated and the way society works and the trickery that's used. Um, and I'm just really glad that as a, how old was I, a five or a six-year-old child, when I was offered 
who did I want as a guardian? Was it the reptilian, the draconis, or was it the mantis? That I asked for the mantis. I was actually offered a purple robe or a sword. The sword would have been the reptilian, mm. and the, the purple robe was the mantis. And I actually remember as a five or six year old boy holding the purple robe above my head. I was choosing that. Uh, and I remember saying to the, the, the mantid entity, did you know I was going to choose this? And the reply, obviously it's all telepathic, but the reply was, um, if you have eyes to see, then you see. So the other side, the reptilian side, was always conscious of the fact that um, I was not going to play the game that they wanted. Because if I was going to play the game they wanted, then I would be telling everyone to get on spaceships, or I would be telling everyone to vote for Hillary Clinton, or I would be doing this, that and the other, mm. um, and I'm not. And I wouldn't be holding a, a conversation with you, because you're a good person, and had I had an evil intent, I would say, well, I'm not doing an interview with Kerry Cassidy, because she'll ask me difficult questions, or this, that and the other. Yeah. But if you don't fear anything, right. you know, then, then you do that. I mean, I, will, I, I, I did a, um, an interview with a Ukraine um, internet radio show just mm. last week who were very anti-Putin very anti-Putin and mm. I've obviously publicly come out and said that I think Putin's pretty good for the planet at this time note I haven't said he was a good man I said he was the right person at the right time so when that happened I had an opportunity then to reach people who had only ever had one form of information which was Putin is bad um, Hillary Clinton is good so what I was able to do was say, do you realize that the CIA or elements of the CIA funded the revolution in the Ukraine? Do you understand that? Do you understand how the, uh, the VPN line that runs through Ukraine was hacked by the CIA with information that Russia had targeted its nuclear missiles on England and America? Um, do you understand that then the other side swapped it? That all these games are going on. So. Whether they listen to it or not is their choice, but I am acting as a balance. So when somebody comes to me who um, has a negative intent or wishes to play devil's advocate, only a coward or a fool would not wish to engage with that person because what you say is, I want nothing to hide, mm -hmm. and the truth will actually show through. Sure. You know, that's, that's, that's the philosophy that I work with. Absolutely. Uh, now, I've recently interviewed Michael Shrimpton, Ah. And he is a, well, he's, he was a barrister, an English barrister, and he in, intends fully to get his full barrister privileges, yes. you know, and uh, title back. But at the moment, he went to jail, um, actually, for notifying Britain that there was a nuke. Uh, it was actually verified by the NSA, hmm. and, uh, and, and it was during the Olympic Games, supposedly going to threaten the situation. Yes. He was given good intel apparently by Benjamin Fulford, uh, yeah. among other people. And they arrested him and threw him in jail for mm. six months mm. for warning them. So mm. this is the state of affairs in Britain at the moment, mm -hmm. important to know. Mm -hmm. um, but what he's really talking about is an infiltration from a, a very secret German intelligence agency that's mm -hmm. not well known, apparently, on the planet, called DVD mm -hmm. for short. Mm -hmm. And those, I can't pronounce what that stands for. Mm -hmm. So um, what I wanted to ask you is, it's very interesting because normally in the news or even in, you know, something like somewhat pretty educated a CIA front veterans today, they will talk about, uh, they will talk about, uh, you know, the Mossad, you know, and, and the Israelis and, you know, all the different governments and mm -hmm. what they're doing. But very seldom ever mm -hmm. will this organization show up. Mm -hmm. And he is attributing a great deal mm -hmm. to this organization. Mm -hmm. And what, what it points to is that Germany, first of all, in a certain sense, we know they didn't lose the war. And my interview with William Tompkins addresses this as well from the standpoint of the reptilians mm -hmm. and how the reptilians basically and the influence came over really with the paperclip scientists, mm. among other things, and uh, and continues to this day, and that mm. NASA has been infiltrated in the U.S. and upper levels of the British government as well, 
with German agents, in essence. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, have you been exposed to this? Have you seen this influence uh, in your own trajectory? Because you were in politics here in Britain for a while. Well, I don't know if you consider yourself still in politics or not. Um, I left politics because it was getting to the point where I would have compromised myself. In other words, if you have a truth <clears throat> and you believe in that truth, uh, at this stage on the planet, you cannot be a high-ranking politician and be credible in terms of your honesty to yourself and the love for yourself. So the system on the planet now ensures that only, <clears throat> certainly in the Western, wo Western world anyway, that most, most politicians um, have already been compromised. Uh, the reason that, that Mr. Trump is not compromised is because he's a billionaire and there was no way they could compromise him. What has he said? He said he's only going to take one dollar of the $400,000 salary that the president has. He has to take the dollar because otherwise he's not the president. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't need the money. And when he actually made that statement, he was saying to everybody, don't try and bribe me. I don't need the money. That's why he did that. And also why on his, not his acceptance speech, but the speech of the night that Clinton actually said that she conceded defeat, he said, I have over 200 generals and admirals backing me. It's the first time any politician, whether they be Democrat or Republican, on his speech on the election night has said, I am backed by 200 military people. The reason for that was he was warning everyone else. Uh, particularly, he was warning elements of the CIA and some elements of the FBI that if you uh, attempt to remove me, there will be civil war in this country. So, okay, let, let's, let's, let's see and if we can... And by this country, which country? America. America. Of course. Okay. Of course. Um, um, Shrimpy, as I will call him, is a genuine person. And I've got no problem with him at all. He's a very genuine, honest person who believed that if he spoke the truth, then it would be acted upon. And unfortunately, he, he worked out that the corruption is so high that that isn't always going to be the case unless it plays to a certain agenda. Um, Michael Shrimpton um, is genuine and I have actually, uh, I'm aware of what some of what he said and everything that I've heard him say I would actually confirm is accurate. Um, but if somebody like Benjamin Fulford, who is still in my humble opinion an active CIA asset, mm -hmm. says something, um, that doesn't mean it's okay for you to go and say it because he has been authorised to release that information. But if another person hasn't been authorised and then acts on it, they will not go for Benjamin, but they'll go for the person that's done that. Right. So that, well, there was an, a go-between as well, from what I understand. Right. I, I'm not sure the exact relationship. And his first name is Neil, and I, I don't... I, I no, don't well, Jones, I think. But I could have that name wrong. So doesn't I don't mean wanna, anything to me. Yeah, anyway, he's, he's a person who also had been an intelligence contact okay. for for in this picture okay. and they they both actually they didn't allow Benjamin Fulford to testify in his court trial no which was actually I think I think that should be like um, illegal what they didn't allow one of his primary witnesses mm -hmm. to but whatever um, the other guy did testify but apparently didn't I'm not sure what the story is with that. Mm. Um, so it wasn't only, I just want to clarify that, that it wasn't only coming from Benjamin, but uh, there was, yes, no, a but problem. The, the, point is, the point is that Benjamin Fulford has been tasked with releasing information, Certain information. and is allowed to do that. <clears throat> and, but it yes. doesn't mean that anyone else who, who copies that is also under that same protection. As a British citizen, obviously, having heard this information, though, you must find yourself in this situation as well, right? No. In the sense of hearing information or being given information that then could threaten, you could save lives. Oh, well, I will always go public with that, and I, right. and I have done. Exactly. So I'm saying he did the same thing. Yes, but I don't act on information from Benjamin Fulford. Okay. <laughs> there you go. That's yes. what I'm saying. Because uh, if, you, if, you, why, if, if, you, if you were to categorically come out and say something mm -hmm. and, and name Benjamin Fulford, then you will be taken to task because you do not have the, 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 the okay to go with that information. And the, the, the proof of what I'm saying is because Fulford was not allowed to testify in court because he's still a CIA asset. And technically, that information doesn't exist. 
So they wouldn't allow him to come to any form of court because he, he doesn't exist. He exists on, a, on, a, uh, on an ex-newspaper site. He exists uh, as on a website. But in the, the establishment's view... So that's what I'm saying, that people who have information and believe at the moment that the system is okay and they can go and use the system is wrong. Look, look, at, look at David Icke. Um, I am asked, answering your question. Look at David no, Icke. Uh, he decided that he wanted to change society for the better. Mm -hmm. And what did he do? He went and created an internet, radio, and television station. Okay? Mm -hmm. You cannot, at, at the present on the planet, you cannot use the structure to change itself. Mm -hmm. And that's why it was attacked because he needed a bank manager, he needed a, a, an advisor, he needed this, he needed buildings and equipment. Mm -hmm. The system is inbuilt to protect itself and as soon as it, was, it detected that he was about to change that, it destroyed him. Um, there have been many other people who have tried in a physical sense to make change mm -hmm. and it's been turned against them. Sure. And they are infiltrated and attacked. You are psychic and you will survive greater than, than others because of that psychic ability um, and you're aware of that and you have been attacked we all have those of us who are trying to do good here but the point is that unless you have a if you are an individual it could be military it doesn't matter what it is if you have an, ind an individual and you've been authorized to release information then you can release that information up to that point through the channels you're allowed to, Charles Hall was authorised to release the information as a weatherman on Area 51, providing he put a disclaimer on the book saying this book isn't real. Right. But if you don't do that and you say um, there's going to detonate a nuclear bomb at the Olympics, and then they will look back through their piece of paper and say, who authorised him to do that? Oh, nobody authorised him. OK, who's protecting him? Oh, nobody's protecting him. He's easy meat. We'll get him. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what they do. Have you been authorised? If you're not authorised, who is protecting you? If that's a big player, then they leave you alone. And that's, that's how it's happened. Isn't Fulford also protected, though, by, uh, by the Oriental Secret Societies that he well, claims? Right. The White Dragon Society, uh, interestingly enough, for what I call Solomon's Gold, does protect him. And there are assets within particularly, actually, the CIA who are closely connected with white dragons mm -hmm. um, and it is a protection for the future. In other words, there are people who have the ability to model the future. And there was actually, I would say, less than six weeks ago, a very serious attempt to put us on a different timeline. <clears throat> they really tried to take us off this timeline. It failed, but if you have the ability and you can model the future, you will see that humanity is going to evolve. So, okay, which side do you want to be on? The winning side or the losing side? So perhaps for wrong reasons, there are individuals in those um, big organisations who are saying, it's tough for us at the moment, but in the next two, three, four, five years, we will be on the winning side. So Fallford is protected, but there are also groups who don't like him and would do away with him if they could. Mm -hmm. Sure. But as long as he, he releases the information that he's permitted to release and in the fashion he's released, then he, he, they don't have a, they can't do it. So, right. so to me, Fall Ford is genuine. He's absolutely genuine. I've never yes. met him, but I know from the people, that I've, I've never met him once, but from the people that I've met who, who, who monitor him, and I don't mean they sit watching a camera, but they, they have information coming back, that he is a very, very genuine man. Mm -hmm. Sure. And that's what and I've been told. I have met him and oh, interviewed okay. him in person. And we're the, one of the few people that have actually okay. flown to Japan right. and sat with him the way I'm sitting with you. Yeah. And, and we did that in the very early days. Okay. Highly recommend that interview if you really, really want to know the man because okay. he, he reveals. I haven't seen it, but maybe I'll, I'll watch it. A personal side of himself. Um, but he was threatened. He freely mm -hmm. admits that. Yes. And so... If you put two and two together, mm -hmm. he's operating. Yep. He has a great love for Japan. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure he's balancing, you know, a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, but he is also coming up with 
wrong information, mm -hmm. which I'm sure is purposely given to him yes. to, you know, balance those scales with regard to what they allow him to do and what they allow him, you know, not to say and so I, on. I would actually add differently to that. Okay. You, if you are an intelligence agency, you are tasked with destabilizing and stabilizing. Right. So when they give him or anybody false information, it is not about destabilizing him. It is about destabilizing the group that that information is meant for. So, for instance, if we wanted to destabilize the Vatican, mm -hmm. we would use a, 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 an organization or an individual who would say something which would appear, and I'm going to make jokingly here, would put the fear of God into the Vatican. Mm -hmm. So if we were to say that a certain planet was had been detected, but it was outside of Lucifer's uh, the telescope, Lucifer telescope, it was outside mm -hmm. of Lucifer's range, but Hubble had picked it up, then you would put the Vatican into an absolute panic because they would believe then that the owners of the planet were coming back. So often individuals are used not to make them look stupid, but to use the information to attack other individuals or organisations, either to support them or to destabilise them. Sure. So I would say that, that well, someone like him is used like that. Okay, yes. Uh, but from the external view, it will be look, looked at as disinfo. Um, yes. You know, and... Of course, the whole newspaper of veterans today is doing this. Yes. Um, you know. Well, they, they, who did they throw out last year? Something, there was a big battle, wasn't there, in veterans today? Yes. They lost Jim someone. Jim Fetzer, they That's got it. rid of him. They wouldn't allow him yes. to do his thing. Yes. And so, of course, Jim Fetzer is doing some very good work as a result. Right. Um, and I guess there have been others. Uh, and, and I'm not going to go into that. Um, actually, you know... With regard to those, the race coming back, the Anunnaki, mm -hmm. what is your understanding in regard to the Anunnaki and their reptilian side? Because uh, my understanding is there is a, a group of Anunnaki who are more reptilian than the uh, yes. sort of original, uh, they were infiltrated again yes. by the reptilians. Mm -hmm. uh, Ashana Dean calls them the Syrian reptilians. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm mm -hmm. not sure mm -hmm. exactly why she calls them that, but that's what she calls them. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones that are really, really reptilian. Mm -hmm. But my understanding is the original Anunnaki were not unnecessarily reptilian. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. what happens is what we're dealing with is a lot of people walking around going, Anunnaki are reptilian. Yes. And um, so what I wanted to ask you is this, you just referred to the fact that the owners or the people that were running this planet may be coming back type yes. of thing. And there is this whole Marduk, the return of Marduk, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about any of that? Yes. The, it, there's a huge confusion as to what the Anunnaki are. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I, I've never met Ashiana Dean, but I think she's absolutely accurate. Mm. Um, I would call it the Orion Empire and the Syrian Confederation. Mm. Uh, one was much more reptilian, that would be the Syrian, than the Orion. Mm. What the purebred reptilians did was to try and hybridize everything they could yes. to put reptilian into it. Because a little bit like the Borg from Star Trek, it was about assimilation, it was about taking over. And that was actually because AI had already affected them and mm. they were carrying out this AI instruction, although they didn't actually fully understand themselves. The original Anunnaki were probably uh, very, very white-skinned very angular, um, may or may not have had beards. I'm not clear on that myself, but they know that they had very little reptilian, if any, in them. Mm -hmm. But they were very, almost if you were to take chalk or flour and put it on your face, mm -hmm. that is a sort of impression. Somewhat like Nordics, in the sense that Nordics' faces can be very yes. pale. okay. Um, but perhaps not as pretty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well... You're making a judgment, Kerry. I know. Because I'm who is to say joking. what's ugly or pretty? I, I know. I know. You know? Look, absolutely. Uh, I've, seen, I've seen creatures that people would say were terribly ugly, but are very spiritual and have a great deal of humanity. I've seen things that, from an, an establishment point of view, look beautiful, but are full of evil hate. I'm with you 100%. I know you are, there. I know. I always, you know, because people have a, a standardized view, view mm -hmm. of Nordics, which is, I think, in a way, rather dangerous. But okay. 
you know, seeing them as beautiful. Yes. They're constantly re referred to in this way. So well, I was sort of joking well, about reptilians that. reptilians also masquerade as Nordics. Yes, absolutely. And, and this is, yes. Yes, and this is a problem because yes. people can be taken in. Yes. Um, and um, interestingly, you mentioned uh, Bill, Tom is it Thompson, Tompkinson? William Tompkins. Tompkins. And the, the Nordics come up a lot there. Mm -hmm. And that's quite an interesting thing to develop, but we'll, we'll talk about it now, maybe. Um, so we have a group of very reptilianized um, entities that gave the running of the planet to a much more human-based um, grouping mm. and then went off. And these um, Anunnaki, who were left on the planet, because that's the name they took to themselves, because they were following through from those who created them, you know, in, 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 a, yes. Yes, in a laboratory. Um, they decided they could run the show themselves. And that's what's happened. And they found great power, uh, power beyond their dreams. And their one great fear, apart from humanity rising up and evolving, is the return of their lords and masters as they see them. And that's why the Lucifer telescope, which is an infrared telescope, and the optical telescope were built, because of the Vatican wanted to be the first to be aware of their return. Mm -hmm. And so we have a lot of disinformation coming from good intel sources trying to put the fear of God into the Vatican, saying they're coming back. But then you have a lot of young people um, who are still at high school, who've seen one video, they create something. And so, you know, you, if, you, if you wish to trawl through the stuff, then of course you're not going to find it very easy to disseminate the interesting information. So what I'm saying is that um, there is a spherical object, there are two actually, there is a spherical object that has nothing on it, it's totally automated, but there is another spherical object that has beings on it. Um, and humanity has got to reach a position of development so that when this thing does return, and it will, we are in a position where there's no void or vacuum for something else to come in and try and impose itself as the rulers of humanity. In other words, I want to see humanity uh, fixed, strong, sovereign, so that if someone comes along and says, right, we're going to take back what's ours, we show them the finger, as you Americans would say, and we say, no, thank you. Uh, if you want to sit around the table as equal beings with us, we're happy to do that. But if you think that you're going to force us or organize us or do anything, then no, that's not what's going to happen. My concern has never been the evolution of humanity because we're going to do it. Yes. My concern is the vacuum period between people realizing they've been tricked and lied to and that natural destabilizing until they can then realize who they are, what they are, and what they need to do. And my, my concern is that something or someone will attempt to impose itself when humanity is in that phase shift between understanding it was lied to and developing as to who we really are. That's my concern. And that, I think, is for me, is the greatest danger facing all humans on this planet. Yes, I agree. And I think... Actually, it's happening right now. Yes, it is. That's why I brought the subject up. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, have you heard about the return of, uh, or the, okay, do you know about the TV show called The Event that was depicting a return of a group or sort of an, an infiltration by a group of uh, from Aldebaran in, that were... Nordic-like, but they were the original ones who helped the Nazis with their technology, uh, that have been said to be coming to Africa, and that there was an idea to give them lands in Africa. Had you heard that story, Gordon Duff uh, was one of the first people to put it out, as far as I know. Uh, since then, I did have a couple other verifications of it, so I'm wondering you've heard anything right first of all i've never heard of a television show called the event oh okay. i've not heard of that 
Yeah, it's available on Netflix for anyone who knows okay. wants to know, and you can watch it for free. And okay. they make it very easy to watch it. Okay, you know to get it. So no, I've no yeah, knowledge it's on like that. a mini series type thing. It okay. didn't last a whole long time, but right. it was all about the return of a group of humanoid beings right. who then deal with a, a president looking like Obama. Hmm. So, so oh, that is that is the group that attacked me today, and we call them the banished. They are a group that um, have a base in Antarctica. They are a semi-Nordic race who have been compromised um, and are linked in with certain people in American government. Mm -hmm. um, and they have been playing a fairly low profile. They communicated or were part of the Aldebaran group. We call it Aldebaran Task Force first arrived through the Giza intelligence and then physically arrived later. Mm -hmm. um, that is why um, certain people have been going to Antarctica, certain people have been asked to go there. I've not been asked to go there, but certain people have been asked to go there to verify something that they saw many years ago and to confirm that these are the same beings that that individual saw when he was in space. So that individual saw that and then obviously had to come back because he was very sick. And that's Buzz Aldrin. Oh, right. Yes, you've absolutely. Had, you've had your vice president go there, whole meetings, mm -hmm. and are you aware that the Pope had attended? The Pope has been to Antarctica and he was also there because well, it's... and John Kerry during the election. Uh, well, this is the group that, that all met there because yes. this, is, this is the group that runs the earth at the moment. Mm. These are the group who run the earth at the moment. Um, that's why it was so important that, that, that Clinton did not get elected because it was a real break to their power base. That's why they went into panic. That's why the Clintons moved $1.6 billion of their own money to both Switzerland, where the Rothschilds are based, and to Qatar. So they're ready to do a runner if, when the new president takes over, he does attempt to arrest either of them, uh, arrest Bill Clinton for paedophilia and arrest... Uh, his wife for um, satanic abuse of children. Um, so they have 1.6 billion stashed away to, to make a run. But they're in problems now because there was a very credible assassination attempt of two Rothschilds, um, but n not, not, um, not the youngest one. And that's a great warning. And that's why Her Majesty the Queen of England um, just recently announced that she was stepping down as patron of 31 children's charities. So she no longer is the patron of 31 children's charities. Um, I would suggest, my lord, that if you have your finger in the till for five years and then you suddenly take it out, that doesn't mean that you're innocent. Right. So there is a great deal going on at the moment. Um, and I would say that uh, at the moment, at the very top of the Edgar Hoover building, people are wondering what the best option for them is. <laughs> That's an interesting reference. Hmm. You know, there is someone who constantly is putting out the alarm. You've heard the Hoover Dam is supposed to, hmm. come, you know, hmm. come down. Hmm. And uh, actually, there are several people that have been warning about this. Mm -hmm. And so, do you want to say anything about that? Uh, no. Since you mentioned the name well, Hoover. <laughs> well, there are... Only a fool would want a civil war in America. Only a fool would want that. It was very close. Yes. It was very close at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, something like 20 to 25 states. Uh, the National Guard were called out at three o'clock in the morning. Mm. Uh, it's very, very, it's been very close. That's over with now. That's, we've, we've, we've moved past that. Um, Obama was on the verge of signing a document enacting a rerun of the election if possible which would have been, the, you guys, is it Tuesday or Thursday you vote? Uh, that so, we voted? You no, know, you, you, we in this country, elections are always held on a Thursday. I think Tuesday. It's Tuesday, yeah. or is this? I'm sure mm -hmm. it's a Tuesday, Tuesday. yeah. At the last Tuesday of December, he was thinking of, but in order to do that, it would have to show huge corruption by the Republicans. And how can you show corruption if you're actually doing it as well? Sure. So... What they've done is they've gone for a deal, which is, and you come into office, you don't swing the axe and chop all our heads off. Mm. 
and will make the transition fairly smooth. The top of the FBI will probably have a holiday, I would imagine. Really? I think so. Because uh, they're not going to take down, um, I forgot the agent's name, who went after Hillary. What? No, more than that. I mean, you, you may have the information and what I'm telling you is just going to, to, to match what you already know. Um, when this was all kicking off and the head of the FBI said, we're not going to, we're not going to actually follow this up. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're actually just going to forget about it. Comey. Uh, yeah. You mentioned the name. I just say the head of the FBI. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. So the, the low ranking and middle ranking agents all made it known that they would resign on block unless the investigation was reopened. Oh. That's why the investigation was reopened, right. because something like 45% of individual operatives as a total were prepared and meant it were going mm -hmm. to walk out. That's why the investigation was re-established. And then there was a meeting where every available FBI agent in Washington was called to a meeting, no matter what they were, what their position was, and there was a a vote taken amongst that group because it, always the Washington agents, it's the, you know, if you're in Seattle or somewhere like that, um, but if you're in Washington, the east side, not the west side, if you're in Washington, then you have a special position and you have a vote. Mm -hmm. And that vote was taken and what basically happened was that uh, the, it was decided that the last leaking from WikiLeaks wouldn't go ahead because it was the FBI the middle and lower ranking elements and the CIA who were ensuring that WikiLeaks information about Hillary Clinton was coming out. It was not WikiLeaks itself. And, you know, when, when um, it made me laugh when Hillary Clinton was saying, you know, that, you know, the WikiLeaks had lost her the election. No, it wasn't. It was her own elements. And, and in Britain, uh, a large uh, part of the country was taken down on its internet server and I can't now remember the day, but it was right. probably last about three or four hours. Mm -hmm. And this was to ensure that the last wave of WikiLeaks would come out because there was a, an element in Britain which is connected to America which can switch off the internet, can turn it all off. Mm -hmm. And so that was taken down by the good side so that that last information would come out. But there was to have been a final release of information, but that wasn't allowed to come out. So that th those who are currently in charge of the FBI will probably have a nice retirement, I would think, in the very soon future. Ah, I see. There'll be a changing of the guard. Well, you, you, you guys, and I mean you guys, American, you're going to have, for all intents and purposes, a military government. You will have a military government. This is the first time. They, they, they'll dress in suits, but you will have a military government. And the reason for that is that your politicians generally, not wholly, generally can't be trusted anymore. Right. The military can because the military in your country never lost its connection with the citizens. They never allowed themselves to be corrupted to that point. Okay, well those players, are they visible in the cabinet choices? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. You've just got to look to see who, yes. who was and is. Um, and that means that, that they are the face of morality in the sense that they are the fa I mean, I'm not going to mention any names, I really won't, but at the Clinton count, at the, the, the election, uh, and a certain person came on and said, Hillary is not going to come and address you, so you might as well go home. That particular individual, um, you remember earlier I said that there'd be certain people that I would string up because they abuse children. Mm -hmm. well, that's an interesting person, the person that did that. Right. We won't talk any more about that. All right. We've kind of gone all over the map, <laughs> and I would like to give you a chance to bring up some topics that I haven't thought of, and anything crucial that you'd like to get out there. We will try to edit this as quickly as possible. Sure. Uh, it's just kind of the style in which I work. Mm -hmm. um, 
so between now and New Year's, sometime, you know, a day or two after New Year's, we'll mm. probably put this out. Sure. So anything crucial? Well, first of all, <clears throat> off camera, we were talking about how money is such a control system on this planet and how a black magic spell was placed on money. And that's why all major banks are placed on node points, energy points on the planet. And the only way to truly free humanity is to remove their connection to money. Uh, this is the only planet that I'm actually aware of where money is everything. In most planets, it's a barter and trade system where uh, you exchange energy or you exchange something for something else. But here, <clears throat> the... Uh, the lower connections have really attached to money. So what we need is a system where barter and trade becomes equal with that of money. And so that's something I think that we should be looking for. And I'm not the only one actually, there have been other commentators who have said they've had um, communications from Palladians mm -hmm. that the planet needs to move towards a barter trade system. And I believe 2017 it will. Um, in terms of up and coming, um, I think we need to be really, really aware that whilst humanity is in this process of breaking free, there are still uh, opportunities for negatives. And one, and we mentioned an EMP blast, I'm still quite clear that that's a very uh, strong candidate. Uh, a neutron explosion is still a very clear candidate. Or that old chestnut of a false flag alien invasion is actually still top of my board mm. because it destroys the least infrastructure. If you can control the minds and hearts of somebody without actually knocking down the house, they'll go for it. If they want to knock the house down because they want a, an apoplectic destruction, then that's what they'll go for. But as I've always said when this topic's come up, even these bad guys, they don't know what they want. They haven't decided. One month it's war, we'll do this. And then the next month it's something else. And that's why when commentators uh, bring the subject up, uh, you'll find for three months it's alien invasion. And then for the next three months it's this. And that's because they're genuinely reflecting the, um, the disorganisation at the top level. But all of those three things are real possibilities, things that they've planned for, modelled out, um, and on occasion have come very close to, to, to doing. So... Watch out for the, the financial situation, the banking situation. Watch out for people who uh, purport to be a saviour, that they have the answer. Um, please don't fall in line to take any inoculations, which may well be offered in the coming year. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I've always said to people, just believe in yourself, trust yourself. Uh, you know, Ask yourself always, what should you do? Ask your higher self. Mm. And that's really it. That's really all I want to say. Okay. Uh, well, that's that's great to, to get this kind of, you know, talk with you where we get a chance to kind of go all over the map okay. and not worry so much about time. I do want to ask you, I'm, I'm sure there are people that are curious about the manted race in terms of how they, they manifest here on Earth. And where? Because there are people that ha feel more of a relationship to them, mm -hmm. you know, and perhaps would look for clues to their relationship, as well as just curiosity about, you know, if they come into this atmosphere ever, and how much, and, and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Do you have anything you could talk about in that regard? Um... I would be surprised if it was geographically um, controlled. Uh, my understanding would be that it's about you, your soul, and your bloodline, and your history on the planet. Mm -hmm. If you have a... If you've reincarnated here many times, and you've always sought for the betterment of humanity, or maybe you didn't, maybe you started off as a very negative person, but through your own learning, you rejected that, and over many lifetimes, you actually changed, and you went from, it was a very, very 
twee, but you went from the dark side to the light side, then you have been on a journey of enlightenment. Mm -hmm. And that puts you in a very strong position. But generally speaking, mantis or mantid will connect with those that have some element of that history in them. So if you, you have a part mantis soul, or you have in the past worked with mantis, then you are more likely to have an ongoing connection as your family is. So you could come from a family of four or five, and one child might have a Pleiadian soul, one might have a reptilian soul, one might have a mantis soul. I don't think we can necessarily say that everybody coming from this particular geographical location might do that, but you will find that like attracts like. So people who have a type of resonation or frequency uh, to somebody else will feel at ease with them or they'll feel some connection. Um, and you will tend to find that reptilians draw, draw reptilians, Palladians draw Palladians, mm -hmm. and that's how it works. There's nothing wrong in that as long as we don't become uh, isolationist. As long as we say, look, actually it doesn't matter what you are inside, it's what you profess, it's what you do, it's what you want. If you've made a, um, uh, a statement and you are living for truth, it doesn't matter whether you've got a 100% reptilian soul because you have made that choice to be what you are. Um, you and know, I, I often hear you refer to the soul as being you know, a <clears> certain <throat> kind of soul. Yeah. And I understand uh, having prior lives as various beings. Mm. But I do think that there is some confusion about the soul, what the nature of a soul really is. Mm -hmm. And it fascinates me and also dismays me that there are a lot of very religious people that like to think that nothing has a soul except a human, a so-called human. Mm -hmm. um, and I wonder if you can tell me why it is you think there are, you know, what would be the difference other than an incarnation as that being in, say, a 3D or even 4D. But going above that on a certain level, mm -hmm. development as a soul, a soul, mm -hmm. it is interesting to contemplate whether there really would be a difference substantially from one soul to another kind of soul, depending on what kind of being you inhabit. Mm -hmm. Do you have a thought about that? Well, let's start off with animals. The Buddhist religion is perhaps the religion that I find the most interesting. Mm. and perhaps the most true. Mm. Um, we can go through life and find a dog or a cat or a horse which seems to be very, very closely connected to us. Mm. And I would say that that animal has been connected with you in a different lifetime. Uh, so it is wrong for anyone to say it's just humans that have an aware soul. The difference is that humans have choice an animal doesn't have those same sort of choices. So its learning is different. Mm -hmm. um, what was the, the second part of the question? Well, the kind of soul. In other words, is there a kind of soul? Is soul, you know, soul being a crystallization of, of a being mm -hmm. that exists past this, uh, the incarnation? Right. You know what yes. I'm saying? In a sense, a crystal, you could think of it as a crystal, if you like, okay. a many faceted, mm -hmm. you know, multi-dimensional, you know, um, okay. and it is said to be eternal, to have that. Yes. So, in other words, I, I do see it as a, a sort of a pattern, but I don't necessarily see it as one ah, I see what you're saying. being locked into one right. species versus right. another. Right. Well, I'll tell you what I see. Yes. When the great creator makes one of us mm. as a soul, then we are given all the information we need to make a choice mm. as to where we wish to learn. And believe it or not, most, most, most of us are actually, we like being with others. Very few want to be on their own. You don't have to exist in a biological body. You don't have to exist in a biological body to learn and experience. But if you imagine that you were in fifth dimension, and you would have the ability to be telekinetic and the ability to be telepathic. There isn't a problem you can't solve. So let's say your, your, your washing machine breaks down. So you can telepathically, because there's no internet, you can telepathically ask Uncle Fred 
who used to mend washing machines, how do I fix this? We don't actually learn because we are continually being supported. Here on the 3D world, when a problem faces us, it's right in our face. Mm -hmm. And we can either turn and run from it, in which case we don't learn, or we can face it and get angry, in which case we don't, go, we don't learn. Or we can look at it and try and understand it, and then we have learned. So the greatest gift is to come to this planet and to be in a biological body because 100,000 years on this planet is worth many millions of evolution elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So the great creator creates one of us. And we're given a choice where we want to go. Now let's say, for instance, we want to go to Andromeda, or we want to go to Cyrus, or we want to go to the Pleiades. That is where we incarnate in a body. That is our star family, because they have accepted us. Never mind we said we wanted to go there, they have said, yes, we'll accept you. So now we take on the physical form of the beings there. We take on their culture. So we become that being. Mm -hmm. Now let's say we go back to source a million years later, and then we come to another planet, let's say Earth. We will have Earth genetics, but the soul which has largely been formed by its first choice, its star family choice, will begin to express itself through the body of that individual. So their physical shape will actually show traits that we would, or I would certainly identify with certain, certain individuals. So what happens is if you, I've seen people who came from one star system and were very, very unhappy, incarnated in another star system, and although I can read back to where they originated from, they are far more like the planet that they call home, even though it wasn't their initial starting point. So, in my opinion, souls are all equal, but they are changed or altered or developed by the culture they go into if they accept that. Okay, so in a certain sense, uh, thank you for that, because I think it, it does, when you say you have a mantid soul, hmm. it it's been imprinted by the mantids, by living among them, perhaps. And if you live among, you know, now our theories on, on <coughs> this may be different, but when you say that, what I would say is actually, you know, the soul is a certain kind of construction which isn't linked to a physical body. Mm. It, it grows and it, it, it gets enhanced through incarnating yes. into physicalities. Hmm. Okay, be they star beings or humans or whatever, dogs, cats, but it doesn't remain, that's not the soul. The soul is something that, like a crystal, it doesn't have a, a beingness other than, as you say, once it reincarnates into a body, it starts exhibiting those characteristics that it, re, like a memory, hmm. that have become part of its characteristics, I mm. guess you might say, on a, in a more material way. But, and certainly you could, even when you leave your body, you know you have a light body, right? And your light body can travel. Mm. And you then can, it, actually your light body can take on the characteristics of the beings that you feel most reflect you mm. at that point. Mm. And it is said that we have, uh, actually we are composite of 12 ET races, that we are not just one or two, but actually at least 12, and at this point um, there we've been invaded so many times that there are a lot of other races that have now contributed to our gene pool, so mm -hmm. to speak. So that's that's why I wanted to get a, some clar clarity from you in regard to when you said a manted soul, mm -hmm. what you meant, but now I understand what you mean. Okay. okay? Um, and I think it's valuable for people to hear that because perhaps they had the wrong idea. What idea do you think they might have had, Kerry? Um, well, that you, you know, that you were, uh, that a soul had a certain quality being only a manted soul. In other words, that it's, it's, it gets into a discussion about the soul. It's rather esoteric, and I realize <laughs> it may be beyond the scope of this interview just in general because it's, mm. you know, um, sort of a difficult subject to address. But as, you know, I have people writing to me who mm. fully believe 
that humans are the only ones with souls. Okay. And so I really wanted to kind of at least, in your case, you, you have a certain view of a certain race that has souls. You see what I'm saying? We're not talking about spirit. No, no. We're talking about soul, the, a soul. Of course. Soul. The thing is that, that, that if we accept that there's a source and we accept there's a great creator, mm -hmm. why would it only put a soul into a human beings? I, I mean, that's such a logical, that's a such a logical argument that I can't understand anybody but being able to... But very religious hmm. people. Ah, well, that's different because that's a control network. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And it's, it's very dismaying. It's very, you know, it's very saddening because the trouble is that if you do such a thing, if you, mm -hmm. if you start saying that only humans have a soul, then you can rationalize, you know, killing or maiming or mm -hmm. harming animals, other Animals, animals in particular, yes out there in yes, the cosmos, absolutely. including, you know, plants or animals or whatever. Well, the, Bi the Bible actually says that, that man, and that's the word in there, was given dominion over all the animals. In other words, you have the right to kill anything you want. Well, um, what loving God would actually say to something, you go kill what you want. Yeah. So th within the Bible is its own destruction. Sure. And, but, but when you, you follow in the footsteps of your parents, if you go to a particular church, you cannot hold an argument that attacks that person's belief system because they will not engage in a debate with you. Um, you know, it's one person once said to me, I, I find it very hard to hold a conversation with a drunk. <laughs> so it's pointless. There's no point in actually... Mm -hmm. But having said that, what's interesting is that um, I'm reasonably well known in my country and um, a, a local sect of the Jehovah's Witnesses for the last three years call every Friday uh, to talk to me, ask me to join them. Mm. Um, and we have some very interesting discussions. So we shouldn't imagine that, that those who create religion are ignorant. Mm. Those that create the religion and make the rules actually are fully knowledgeable, mm. but they only allow a certain group to have that full knowledge. All the rest who go to, to the church um, don't have perhaps the same knowledge that they have. Right. Because my, my views should be anti-religion. I'm not anti-God, but I'm anti-men controlling people through religion. And yet here's an organization that knows me fully and keeps coming to my door. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they, you can't have it both ways. Right. Well, those are individuals. You know, in other words, you can't make a blanket statement about all people who are following a religion. Mm -hmm. But you certainly, um, at least in my case... You can talk about individuals who have taken a certain point of view from their religion mm. that then gives them license in a certain way to not only say that other beings have no souls, but that what that means, the next thing that means is mm. that we have not only dominion, but, you know, mm. um, can do really horrible things mm. without a second thought. Mm. And, um, and that's very dangerous. Mm. It is. But I think that many people are evolving beyond that now. Absolutely. But in the surprising places, which, you know, in this sector that I, I do get, I deal with lots of people and they have many sides to them. But unfortunately, for whatever has gone on in this planet, the so-called Bible that mm. people follow um, has put ideas into people's heads mm. that you know, the most open-minded person can come up with this. Mm. I have seen this, and it, it's just, I find it extraordinary. So, thank you for at least addressing that from your mm. point of view, and I think some, some people will find that valuable. So, um, we've been here for a while. I know that this kind of thing goes on way too long for most people to have the attention span, so I do want to kind of close this down. I am thinking that, you know, inevitably people will have questions. You start a conversation, you know, we go mm. back and forth and so on. So it, do you want to give out, I don't know, a website, an email address, somehow people can reach you? Not really, because <clears throat> there's only me and a few very dedicated helpers. Okay. <laughs> and um, I'm just totally swamped. Are you? Absolutely yeah. swamped. Um, I'm not a corporation. I don't have huge amounts of money. I don't have, you know, there are certain people who have big names and they have teams of people who, who go trawling the internet and get this and that. And I don't do any of that. You know, I, I just, I can't. So many people uh, wish to connect with me um, and it's just not possible. 
uh, it's a great shame. Uh, I do have a website, but you know what I do is I I get my uh, assistant who posts on the web for me when I have warnings or messages. And on my website, um, if I've got some intel which I verified, that's where I put it. So I would say to people, just check the website reasonably regularly. SimonParks.org. Have a look at that, um, and. If they look at the around the time of the election, your election, they'll have seen I was posting a lot of information. So that's how I, I would prefer to, to, to communicate with people. Um, uh, it, it's just impossible. I can't do it. It's just me on my own. Yeah, I totally hear you. <laughs> I'm, I'm inundated as well. So uh, just as part of this, just let me apologize. If I miss your emails, please understand. <laughs> It, it's not humanly possible, you know. None of us are really big corporations. Um, Thank it's goodness. Just myself and my my webmaster, you know, mm, and know. and my cameraman, and that's that's the extent of it, you know. Yes, I know. How can we possibly? But that's apply why. To... That, but that. But that is the beauty of it. It's because we're not a great big organization right. that we are able to do what we can do. That's that's. I think the agreement we have. Goes with that. Indeed, but the problem is that the topics that we touch on proportionately very few touch on right. and the sincerity and the honesty to which we are mean that others wish to connect mm -hmm. and so the thing is we disproportionately get large numbers of inquiries um, and you know you just cannot physically answer them you just cannot do it and of course right. everyone who doesn't get answered thinks well he doesn't care or she doesn't care I'm not interested and, and it's not the case no. you know I would love a situation as I know would you where we had 10 or 15 people uh, whose job was to answer those emails bring them to our attention Absolutely. you know and one day hopefully in the future when this planet changes on the energy basis where the work that you do and I do and others do is actually as important as the local school or the local police station then we will get that mm. because it will be seen as a vital part of everyday life, not just something that's a bit odd and shunted to the corner. <laughs> that's what we want yes. and, and that's what we're fighting for. And, and I've always said it, haven't I, that I have the greatest respect for you because your truth and your belief carries you forward um, and allows you to do the work that you do. Mm. And so if we believe in that and we follow it, then we have to be victorious. That sounds a bit like a war, but sometimes it feels like a war because there are so many agencies or organisations that wish us not to be successful. Absolutely. But it is the public out there who will make this choice. Not you, not me, it is them. If they are ready for change and they want change, then it will happen. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter how many times I'm interviewed by you, it <laughs> won't make the change. They've got to want that yes. to happen. But what we do is we, we push another inch we push another inch, always believing and hoping, Kerry, that that final inch is enough that starts it working. Yes. And, and that's why we do what we do. We couldn't do anything else. You couldn't do anything else. This is what you do. Yeah, I, it is. Um, well, you know, it's, it's also only s surviving through mm. donations that we managed to do this. Uh, That's correct, yeah. And that makes it even more dis difficult. So yes. if you can bring in that barter system, it sounds good to me. Um, yes. Maybe I can get a few more people to help. What I, what, I, what I would like to say to you is that if, if what's projected starts to occur, it would be very nice to come on the show and give you some a real heads up on that mm. and some evidence of what's happening right. and uh, for people to join it. Mm -hmm. Sure, you absolutely. Know? Well, we're looking to a new year, 2017. Yes, we uh, are. Camelot was told when we first started that 2017 was the year. Yes, it, I believe in that. And so, we're here's still the here. beginning of 2017. Yes. Here you are, Simon Parks. Uh, we're still at it. Mm -hmm. And we've been we've been doing it for quite a while now, and uh, so thank you for your service. To God humanity. bless to you. Thank you very much, Kerry. I thank appreciate you. you. Thank you, and likewise. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll be back with more in the future. <laughs>